Welcome everyone. This video is for the magnet um, magnetic propulsion track that uh, I invented many many moons ago. I used to study um, you know just about everything to do with electronics and magnetics. So um, this one came to me in a dream, as I said in my other video. Uh, but I recently acquired this uh, magnetic viewing field and thought those who are into this stuff might be interested in um, what certain arrangements does to the fields. All these magnets here are the same. I've explained the orientation here before in the other video. They're um, increasing increments in distance. Um, but they're all equal increases so it keeps this resonance pattern occurring so here we have um, just two magnets under the the viewing field uh, remove them remove that field and show you so it's just the two magnets one is facing south in that direction one is facing north in that direction okay so and, and then the, the tracks are just replicated as I explained just before. So we put that on there. We can move that around. We see that the field remains consistent. It's now extended these um, darker quadrants. But as we saw before, uh, yeah, I mean, you could wipe that right the way across the field viewer and it's still going to retain those those darker lines so I just use a round magnet wipe over the top of it and clear that field representation and then we've got that so that shows you the size of uh, each field on and the block wall or the blotch wall in the middle there and so it's a really interesting, I mean, you can see this is resistance on both sides. But when you place it onto this, this track orientation, so here we've got, at this end, we've got three, I'll just clean that again. We've got three um, magnets there making one set. So if we place that on there, we can see that it changes this first magnet being closer to the second magnet seems to have a diminished field which in my opinion is part of why it's allowed to enter the field normally uh, you have this particular uh, in there's just a donut magnet and that runs along that track um, in my opinion this diminished field just pure to the just purely from or derived from the arrangement is why this track works where others do not and i've investigated many of them and i've spent thousands of dollars on magnets um so you know i've, I've sat there whilst in between surgeries uh, just waiting trying to entertain myself so trust me when I say I've tried a lot of them I haven't tried it, all of them I'm just not financially capable of trying all of them you get to a point where you learn certain things and there's no point in going down the hole anymore um, you, you know how it works so you'll be happy with what you've what you've created unless you can afford to investigate it further so when you then take this diminished field and now you repeat it when I run this roller uh, it acts as though it's going um, up and down uh, over over like a trough of a hill if I was to place it at this one you'll see like it will slow down and then increase again if, if I could film it properly right and and because of this just this singular group here that is not this arrangement it creates that large block on this side 
Uh, it was just too much resistance for the roller to overcome. But when grouped like this, this arrangement seems to nullify, you know, most of magnet number one's power. And it seems to, I don't know, it just does some, some really, really weird things to the field. You know, and, and it's just not meant to be like that. So, so then when you apply that to this end, and so at this end we've got um, three sets there. And so we'll just cover two sets. You can see at the start, again, we've got this diminished field here. Uh, it's probably not smart to use a screwdriver, it's magnetic. Um, so we've got this, this field here at the front, uh, which is clearly you know, diminished when you compare the ones behind it. Now this is the start of the next track, and look what happens to that. Two of these magnets now are actually creating a minimized field. So as we go from segment to segment now, three, three, we've got a different three here. This would be considered the start of the track. We'll get those magnets away from that. And we clear that field again, make sure that that's what we're seeing is what we're seeing. Just a round donut magnet and you just wave it around and that will um, diminish that field. So you can replace it. I mean it does adjust, you know, sort of like live, but um, it will leave traces as we saw before when we wiped it across the entirety. So yeah, now so we've got this diminished field repeated at this point here. And it's coming a diminished field from two magnets and now you can start to see the hill and it's it is represented like this this bigger field here is like the top of the hill and this section here is like it's just gone over the peak and it rolls down again into less resistance and then up again if i just i've got this light here to try and illuminate it. it's running off the um test the coil if I move that down, we can place it inside, you know, so after the beginning of the track. So let's place it, I'll, I'll clear the field again, and then I'll, I'll drop it down in that particular spot. So we're now inside the track. And you can see at this point that we've lost our big field for our entry point. Normally it would extend out to halfway through this magnetic field. So at the front, like we had there, you can see there's this massive field in front, which is your resistance point, which is why I disagree with the you know laws of thermodynamics it's a bullshit trap that they lied to us about this here is your input requirement resistance but what happens when you've arranged them correctly and you remove that now you can clearly see you know peak of the hill if i come from this way i might not put a shadow on the peak of the hill's here. We go down, start coming back up the hill. Peak of the hill, down. So this thing, after one input pulse, will continue for as long as you can make that track physically. And I am more than willing to debate it. But 
only if you've actually tested it. It's not that hard to build. You, if you don't have a 3D printer, you can, uh, you know, maybe craft that together out of um, out of wood. There's five mil here, ten mil here, fifteen mil here. Five, ten, fifteen. Now just repeat. There, this is not rocket science. You just got to put it together. Um, you know, in, in the early days, I used to make it out of Lego. Um, and it, it was it wasn't as precise I couldn't get the exact measurements that I wanted so I eventually purchased a 3d printer which are pretty cheap these days and and you can see this I did this on on one of my smaller printers in segments 3d printed the bolts because I don't want any interference from magnetic materials around my design that's a benefit of these 3d printers you print it out of plastic I will advise people probably stick away from the um, black plastics if you're going to play with magnetics because the black plastics uh, do sometimes use iron as their pigment and um, for that reason they're slightly ferrous or slightly magnetic. Um, yeah, black. I'm sure in a lot of cases black uh, iron is used for black pigment so yeah, maybe stay away from that and, you know, like if you're building tester coils, black uh, PVC pipes or, you know, technically anything that has iron in it will have, um, you know, even stainless steel is the same. So, it, you know, seam lines and that sort of stuff I usually use a small quantity of iron to achieve that, um, that seal. So, yeah, um, interesting stuff. I mean, to most of the world, I understand shit boring but uh, to those who have an obsession like me um, that might be interesting information therefore you don't need to go and buy one of these pieces of film um, for me uh, I saw it on uh, Amiga Z's um, website which I'll leave a uh, Amiga ZZ I think it is I'll leave a uh, link in the description for he does heaps of um, videos on magnetic fields and different range of haulback arrays and and stuff like that he's got some great uh, evidence of uh, fields and their real representation I wonder if we can see the um, see that field uh, it might be too um, uh, too far away just with the plastic that's you're know, in this there's or well, maybe five mil thickness before the magnet and then whatever that is that looks like probably 10 millimeters so 15 mil in total it might be um it might be a little too far away oh you can see yeah there is a field there uh, okay, so yeah, that's just a, a normal donut magnet inside there. If it was able to go closer, you would see like the center, a central hole and that sort of thing as well. But I suppose that's interesting as well. That is important. There is a critical uh, distance from uh, a rotor and stators to magnets. You'll see it with, with everywhere. It's like you know, John Searle's... Um, uh, rotating um, electromagnetic motor well I suppose it's a magnetic motor with electric pickup um, his had to have a particular sized rings and and of varying materials to allow that field if you uh, try and run a magnet surface to surface there's this interference between the poles but you get them up uh, you know say 10 15 millimeters above the poles and we've got a whole different thing um, I think I think it's John Searle described it as uh, the law of the squares I know that's not there's actually a law of squares but um, it's not what he was referring to. He's referring to 
as you go over the edge if you get a roller magnet and place it on one of these as you go over the edge of this magnet uh, the roller will shoot down to the other end it doesn't have enough power to shoot over the next edge but they all do they do it on every single corner as you go over the crest uh, it zooms down the other side and, and it'll come back and forth back and forth and the reason for it coming back and forth is there is a neutral zone and that's what we've seen here with this it, it blocks out that neutral zone so this is it, it right here and it blocks that out so I suppose it would be interesting to see the interaction of a magnet in the same orientation as the roller I mean, it's hard to do with the roller because the roller needs to be within its track but you can see that it pushes something forward there on those arrangements I suppose it's coming the other way too so uh, flip it over mm, a better eye than mine could see something um